ditch the rat race, liberate yourself from the nine to five, become your own boss. Like, yeah, all of that sounds amazing. And when it really works, it is really amazing. But there's definitely an ugly side of freelancing that most influencers do not want you to know. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel at Welcome for the very first time. All around, welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com, where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro Verified copywriter for about the past eight and a half years. And in today's Freelance Friday video, like I said, we're getting real today. We are diving into the reality of freelancing, kind of the ugly side of things, the negative circumstances that most people don't want to talk about. It's not as glamorous. It's probably not going to get me as many views as the videos about how to make money online. But if you really want to build a career doing this, working freelance like I have, we've got to talk about the reality of the situation. But before we get into that, we have to announce this week's Blogger of the Week. And if you'd like to be the Blogger of the Week, just like Mark A, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. All right, this is going to be more of a chatty, unedited video because A, I haven't done one of this kind of just let me ramble videos in a while. And B, I'm just surprisingly busy this week. The other thing I'll mention before I kind of dive into my rambling spiel, I don't want my comment section to be flooded with negativity of how awful everything is and boo, burn, like... We don't need to get into a negative rabbit hole here. I'm trying hard to put together some free resources that go along with every video. And so for this video with this ugly side of freelancing that no one wants to talk about, influencers don't want you to know, they just want you to sign up for Fiverr and quit your job and do the hustle life, whatever. <laughs> so I'm putting together a list of kind of work-life balance strategies and stability strategies that I recommend. That is completely free and it is on peachpay.me slash carryblogger. You can find other resources there um, and an inexpensive freelancing guide that I think is really helpful that I recommend you download if you haven't yet. All of this is really realistic risks. It's all really realistic scenarios. Um, but there are things that you can do. So the first like big, ugly, gross side of freelancing is very, very obvious. <laughs> and a lot of people spin it as a positive, which I have in previous videos. It personally is a positive for me. Of course, that is the fact that there is an unlimited earnings potential. You're not set at a specific salary. You don't sign up and say, this is what you're gonna get paid regardless of the amount of work you do or the results that you offer. Um, but on the flip side of that, very realistically, you're not guaranteed anything at all. Unless you have clients on retainer that are paying you ahead of time and you build up that stable client base, which is a different story. Um, no, you're not guaranteed anything. That is really challenging. And especially if you come into freelancing uh, out of necessity, maybe you lost your job or maybe you um, are not finding the work that you currently have to be sustainable, to even pay the bills or that it's not... Um, physically possible for you to continue in the work that you're doing. And when you go into freelancing like that, it can be a really rough transition. Like a lot of people who um, contact me for consultations one-on-one -on -one for strategy assessments or just ask questions, they say, you know, like, um, I'm planning to quit my job on Friday and I want to be up and rolling as a freelancer on Monday. Like, how do I make that happen? And uh, unfortunately, one of the big truths is like, it's probably not going to happen. Let's be honest. Um, and that's really frustrating. That's a downside. There's only so much that you can do, um, which you can do a lot, you know, to make sure that you're seen, that you are um, using your visibility and getting a wide audience. And that also, once you have that audience, that you're marketing yourself appropriately, you're using differentiation strategies, you're translating your credibility so that the people who do see you are impressed by you, connect with you, and ultimately choose to trust and order with you. Um, you have control over those things, but you're still at such a disadvantage getting started and really like all good things in life, it takes time. It does, but that's not the same kind of track as with a traditional job. You're not guaranteed anything. Quick plug to uh, break up the ramble here again. Don't forget peachpay.me slash carryblogger. I have a free downloadable document, completely free resource for you about how to build that stability and work-life balance into your life so that these ugly risks and scenarios don't drag you down. And part of that that comes with it is this pressure to underprice and oversell. I personally think this is kind of a myth or really bad advice, I'd say, um, that across the board people say, I can't 
possibly build a business unless I work for these slave labor rates and I only charge $5. I don't think that that's a good idea. But I do want to say one thing to just like hopefully reassure you or provide a little bit of that more optimistic outlook. Um, the data isn't all recent and it's a little hard to source, but I did want to share, share <laughs> some facts that I got from Fiverr's um, company reports or whatever. Um, there were 830,000 registered sellers in June of 2019. 830,000 people who are trying to do the freelance work that you are, whether it's in your category or not. And you might say, holy smokes, there's no way I could ever possibly show up. There's no way I could possibly compete with 800,000 people and carve out a niche. But keep in mind that's different than the number of active sellers. And for that, uh, the number is quite a bit smaller. It's only 255,000. And so you still say, wow, that's a heck of a lot still. Um, 250,000 people, how am I going to compete against that? So the, the years are off here, but the good news is that there are 3.4 million buyers on Fiverr in 2020. 250,000 sellers, 3.4 million buyers, and the average spend per buyer is now over $200. Look on the positive side. Don't get caught up in the competition that's around you and getting bogged down and just playing the same game as everyone else. Because although nothing is guaranteed, you do have more agency than you'd think. And this is also just on Fiverr. You can diversify on other platforms. You can build your audience off platform. Like I'm a big promoter of that. There's a lot of things you can do. Okay, a little change of gears. <laughs> the ugly side of freelancing here um, is taxes and benefits. Again, this is probably obvious, but I just want to like, I wanna lump it in this video and just be real with you guys. Um, you have to pay more in taxes because you don't have an employer who's paying the employer taxes for you. And as a self-employed person, you're in at least in the US, that's, that's all I can talk about here. Um, you have to pay taxes four times a year, estimating and hoping that you've got it right by the end of the year so that in April, when you already owe the next quarter for the next year at the same time, that things don't get totally out of whack. And I've had a lot of really bad tax experiences. I finally got it sorted. I finally got it right. And I have some videos about that as well, but that's really hard. And especially if you're coming into freelancing from a job that had just, oh, you just do a W-9, you just check it in April, it'll be great. That's a big, big um, transition. And of course you don't have benefits. Um, I'm really lucky that my husband is a teacher. So we have public school education benefits, healthcare, which is, um, Real bad, I will tell you, uh, even for a public employee. You also don't qualify for unemployment. So heads up, uh, that's really awful. <laughs> it's really hard. And so without having that social safety net, given the level of instability with freelancing and not knowing for sure if things are going to pan out or how sustainable and just stable your business is going to be, you don't qualify for unemployment the same way that a traditionally employed person would. And I don't personally have an answer for that. The only thing I can say is that I focus really hard on creating my own stability, my own um, financial safety net. And so I earn a lot of money. A, I'm really successful. I'm very blessed. I have a lot of good things going for me financially. We live below our means. That's the way we do it. And I always try to put 11% of my income into a retirement fund. And um, I make sure that we have at least, I think we have six or nine months of rainy day savings. And I know that's such a privileged perspective. And especially if you're going into freelancing in a position of needing the money now, needing the stability now. And then unfortunately that's really not something that's offered. And unless you work really, really hard at it to create that stability for yourself, um, no one's gonna give it to you. It's not gonna happen. It takes a lot of self-discipline, I would say, to like not get too excited about the money or not get too um, hyped on your own train. Because I know that although I, I'm very active in building my business, and continuing to grow it sustainably, to focus on where I can optimize my work, where I can add value for clients, how I can do a better job and you know diversify things. Um, like I said, I'm very active in that, but still I need to be cognizant or aware of the, the inherent risks that come with that stability um, or lack of stability, I should say. One really 
big problem kind of related to that pressure to underprice oversell is to get overworked. And again, that's related to the instability as well, because you could go two weeks where things are super dry. You're like scraping by, you're saying, oh my God, what's going on? I need to make sure that my business works. And overnight, all of a sudden you just have tons of orders and things are flying in and you're so busy and you just feel, you wake up and you feel like I don't have enough time to get this done. And that <laughs> is, uh, both great and really, really frustrating and hard to manage, especially if you have other priorities. And that's what freelancing is supposed to give you is that flexibility to go be with your family, live a flexible, sustainable life um, that really centers on the thing you love. And when you don't have a plan ahead of time and things get really busy, it's really easy to get overworked. And so that is such a downside that again, you have to be very structured in how you build your business to create that level of sustainability and also just to have a good like mindset of work-life balance strategies. Okay, this is the end of my ranty rambly video. Um, haven't done one of these in a while. It's kind of fun to just word vomit. We'll see how much fun this is to edit. Don't forget peachpay.me slash carry blogger. I have a free downloadable document, completely free resource for you about how to build that stability and work-life balance into your life so that these ugly risks and scenarios don't dog you down. If you're still watching, you're my actual hero. Thank you so much for being here. And you can find links to some cool stuff I've got going on in the pinned comment and description down below. As always, you know that you work worth so much more than your workload. And let's get back to work.